Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, I'm Will, uh, Ecosystem Growth Manager at Oasis, and I'll be doing a quick presentation on um, Oasis Safe, um, the multi sig um, on the Oasis Sapphire network. So, what is Oasis Safe? Um, most people are probably familiar with um, Gnosis Safe, now known as just Safe. Um, this was like the the go-to multi-sig wallet, um, and it's the most popular one. Uh, it's currently on networks like Ethereum, Arbitrum, BNB, Gnosis Chain, Polygon. Um, but uh, I think no EVM network is sort of complete without uh, having a multi-sig on their chain. So basically, Oasis Safe is a fork of Gnosis Safe, um, built by a, a third party called Protifier. This is the recommended party that Gnosis Safe um, always recommends when new chains are doing integrations. Um, and basically it has, uh, enables all the same functions that SAFE has, but now on the Sapphire network. Um, so for those of you not familiar, like how do, what are multi-sigs and how do they work? Um, basically most cryptocurrency users probably only deal with um, EOAs, um, basically wallets that have a single private key um, associated with them. Uh, EOAs are, are known as externally owned accounts. Um, basically, yeah, like I said, they have one seed phrase, a private key per wallet address. Um, this is not so secure um, for, for crypto projects or you know, any, anything with multiple owners. Um, you know, basically, keys can be lost or stolen. There could be like phishing attacks, social engineering. Um, and also, like, just like if you have one employee that has the private keys, like, they, a trust can be abused. Um, and so essentially, there's single points of failure. Um, what, how multi-sigs are different, how, how multi-sigs differ are they're enabled to be shared by multiple team members um, and basically you can set customizable um, majorities or minimum numbers of users who have to sign and approve a transaction before execution can occur. So this is known as M of N. Um, here's just like a quick um, or like infographic on it. So you see that two out of three confirmations, so M is two, N is three. Um, confirmations by all wallet owners are needed. The first person signs the transaction. The transaction is pending as um, basically it's waiting for another signer of the three to sign. Once that third signature comes through, the a transaction is approved and will be executed. So um, what, what can multi-sigs be used for and why are they pretty much essential to any um, EVM network? Basically managing funds safely as we talked about, there's single points of failure and it re reduces those. It's also important for um, performing sensitive transactions, such as like upgrading contracts and things of that nature. And then finally, redundancy. Um, basically, like um, you know, if you have a multi-sig with four of seven majority, um, you'd have to lose all four keys at the same time because basically you'd be able you can recover the wallet and then remove those four from the the, um, the pool and add another four uh, later on. So it basically allows for the keys to be lost or stolen, uh, and but still um, recoverable. So the OSA safe features that are live on Sapphire today is the ability to customizably set and change key holders of an M of N parameter, as we just discussed. Um, it supports popular asset types such as ERC-20 and ERC-721. Um, it supports signing via MetaMask and Wallet Connect. And um, we have the ability to add native applications to the eye. Uh, we have one native application, which I'll go over in the demo. Um, but there'll be more to come once we have DEXs, lending protocols, and all these um, apps uh, live on Sapphire. So beyond like, you know, what is multi-sig and what, ha what, what do we have that other networks have? You know, I, I did want to just put one slide here um, to talk about um, basically like where privacy and multi-sigs can collaborate that probably hasn't been done yet. So I think there's like a, some, some, some potential for innovative solutions with multi-sigs um, when they're privacy enabled, when they're combined with privacy enabled technology like Sapphire. So for example, like hiding um, the multi-sig parameters of the M of N. So um, you don't show how, who, the, who, the, who, who are the signatures, who, who are the wallets that are able to sign. So this, is, uh, this prevents people from targeting those specific people. Hiding the number in the majority, so again, like this just prevents people from knowing what they what they need, what the minimum level of signatures they need in order to target is, and then hiding, you know, what the amount of key managers are. So if you hide like all these things, it becomes pretty hard for for like any sort of phishing attacks to uh, expose a wallet, in my opinion. Um, so that's like an interesting area to hold. Um, the other one is like hiding the assets controlled by multi-sig. 
So if the multi-sig is like a DAO, I think it's pretty interesting to just hide the assets that are held by DAOs. This allows for DAOs to like invest privately in projects and um, yeah, I don't know, that's just exciting to me. To me. Um, and the final one is one that we've actually been exploring with some partners, but um, potential like, maybe KYC AML is actually the wrong word, but like regulatory compliant use cases. So I really like this idea of like taking like a stable coin or creating like stable ERC20 tokens on a DEX and allowing these confidential transactions to occur. Um, but like the problem with confidentiality so far in Web3 has been like, it's essentially meant anonymity. And so like then you get things like OFAC and Tornado Cash. And so like one of the things I think is really interesting is like taking um, a wrapper around it and but allowing like a multi-sig to essentially vote on exposing um, those transactions. Like if OFAC says, hey, the, we know that these um, transactions are associated with like terrorists or you know, a hack or something like that, you know, the, the DAO or the multi-sig can essentially vote um, whether they want to expose those transaction data to, um, to, to these regulatory bodies. And in this way, I think you get sort of uh, regula regula regulatory compliant, but also um, uh, private enabled um, crypto, cri crypto uh, primitives. So, um, almost like what we see in traditional, the traditional world today, you know, like, if I send someone, if person A sends person B something, you know, they'll, they won't be able to see what they do after it, but still there's somebody in the middle who like is able to deal with regulatory compliance. And so I find that interesting. So the next part is I'm just gonna go over, you know, a quick demo of how Oasis Safe works. Um, it's not gonna be anything special, but it, hopefully it'll help you if you've never been exposed to Oasis Safe or anything like that before. So here's um, what the, the screen looks like when you come to the Oasis Safe uh, app. You can either add to an existing safe or create a safe. Um, today we will create a new safe. Um, it'll be prompted to connect your wallet. So I'll connect my wallet. Um, so first, the first thing you have to do is name your wallet. So we'll call this test wallet three. Click next. And then you get to pick who are the owners of your wallet. So I can come here. Um, so I have this wallet here um, called EGM. Can I can add another one? You can add OEW. These are wallets um, associated with my, my MetaMask. Um, yeah, so you see OEW, EM. And so now we have three wallets. And you get to pick to decide. So these are the people that are part of the M, um, who, who the signatures. Um, then you get to decide how many people are needed um, for a transaction to go through. So we'll put two here. So the whole everyone who's associated has to sign in order for transactions to go through. Click next, next, and we're just. I don't have enough rows, apparently. Give me one second. Uh, yeah, I have to reject the transaction first. Uh, let me just top it up with rows. All eight should have tokens now. All right, we will try again. Um, it should have tokens now. I just sent it. Unless the Sapphire network is slow right now. It 
looks like yeah, Explorer is not picking it up. Um, so, all right, you know what? Um, let's just start with, I guess, one that I've already made. So if you come here, so basically that would that would have created Test Wallet three, but I've already created Test Wallet one and two. Um, so you can see here. Um, basically, you have the ability to view assets. So you can see that in that wallet, there's seven rows, and what its value is. Um, I own no NFTs in this multi-sig wallet. So this allows you to see the, these types of things. Previously, I've made um, some transactions. So I, it can show you that I sent um, one rows previously. Um, and then, then um, I've received 10 rows. So you can see your transaction history here. You also have an address book where you can see um, your multi-sig wallets as well as everyone who's involved. Um, and then if you go to settings here, so this is te again, test wallet two, you can see that just like test wallet three, it has two out of one, uh, two out of two owners. Um, so if you wanna change that, all you would do is type in one and now you'd click submit. And then you would sign for that transaction. Um, and then you would have to go and move to the um, other wallet as well because it required two. And you see here up here, it says there's a little alert that says that you have a transaction that you have to sign. You have to confirm the policy change. And so when that process, when that transaction is eventually taken, as you see here, um, when you come to settings, it'll now say one of two. Um, I think that the network is going a little slow, as well as like the UI is updating slow. So you'll have to take my word for it, but that's how simple it is to, to change the policy. You can also delete or add owners here. Oh, yes, see, now you see one of two here. So that's how you would change the M of N, as well as you can add people here. So add new owner. If you wanted to add a new wallet, you would just put it there. Um, and as if you want to delete one, you would just remove it here as well. And then you just assign on now one of those transactions. And the last thing I wanted to go over is just apps. So right now we have um, very few apps, but like you can imagine DEXs and lending protocols will be here uh, shortly once they're live on the network. But this is the one app we do have. It's called Transaction Builder. Um, and it allows you to, from the um, from from the um, sort of multi multi say, uh, always a safe UI, you can batch transactions. So that's one. Now I can send maybe to someone else. Uh, I'm sorry. So maybe we want to send it here. We're going to send here three rows. A transaction, and then once you have all the rows, you would create batch, send batch. And now we, we, tra we created a batch transactions. So you can use that in order to send uh, multiple transactions in, in one nuts. Yeah, it's already signed. I, I, ch I just changed it in the um, UI. One of two. One yeah, of two yeah, now. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So if I had done it before, it would have been two, one of two, two of two. Um, so, yeah, that's um, Oasis Safe. Hopefully, that gives you an idea of how simple it is um, to use the Oasis Safe UI um, and use it to, um, you know, interact with dApps and have a more secure uh, multi sig wallet for your transactions. So, thanks, everyone, uh, and have a great day. Bye. <laughs>